My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask you for pardon of my sins and grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Mother Immaculate, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my God and Angel, intercede for me. Lord Jesus, we praise and adore you for this special day of grace which you have given us. For today, August the 22nd, two beautiful things come together, one in heaven, the other on earth. In heaven, the angels and saints are celebrating the queenship of Our Lady, for that is today's feast, and we celebrate it with them. The joy of heaven pours out onto earth. How beautiful you are, Heavenly Mother, in your glory, which is above all the glory of your virtues and the grace of God which fills you. And as a special gift from you, Mother, for mothers always give more than they receive, even on their own special days, you give us today the joy of starting these new meditations in English, these daily times of prayer, which we are calling Ten Minutes with Jesus. It was a year ago today that this initiative launched in Spanish, and now thousands of people from numerous Spanish-speaking countries listen to them and are helped to pray by them. And today, on this first anniversary of Diez Minutos con Jesús, Ten Minutes with Jesus, we launch the English version. Praise be to you, God, and to your Blessed Mother, for henceforth these daily reflections will be available to English speakers to help us pray, to help all of us pray, to help you, my friends, pray wherever you are, in whatever country, whatever place, on the bus, in the train, in the metro, under the earth, deep beneath the earth, at home in your own room, walking along the street, and of course, if possible, in a church before the Blessed Sacrament, which is always the best place to pray but then with headphones so as not to disturb others. And these reflections will help you to pray, to enter into a relationship with Christ, to get to know God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. But that's what we want to do. That's all that we want to do, dear friends, to help you pray, to help you love God and enter his life. Prayer. The Catechism of the Catholic Church tells us, is the raising of one's mind and heart to God. But prayer is not primarily you seeking God, it's Him seeking you. Do you remember that episode of Jesus meeting the Samaritan woman beside the well? We read about it in the fourth chapter of St. John's Gospel. You might like to read about it yourself after this to help you continue your prayer because these meditations are merely sparks to help you pray. We want you to keep on praying when we stop talking. Let's enter this scene together and talk to Jesus. We find you there, Lord, tired, worn out beside the well. You are alone. The disciples have gone to look for food and a woman arrives. We soon discover that her life is in a mess. She's had five husbands and is now with another man. But you, as God, Lord Jesus, you knew that and you were waiting for her. She came to draw water and as she does, you say to her, give me a drink. This woman was a Samaritan, part of that group hated by the Jews and she's amazed because Jews wouldn't even touch anything that had had contact with Samaritan lips. And she says, how is it that you, a Jew, ask me, a woman of Samaria, for a drink? We don't have time to consider every detail of this episode. You might like to do that yourself in your ongoing prayer. But here we see Jesus in his thirst to reach, to save this woman, asking for a drink. It is you, Lord Jesus, who thirsts. As the Catechism tells us, Jesus thirsts. 
his asking arises from the depths of God's desire for us. God thirsts that we may thirst for him. Isn't this amazing? God thirsts for us. His desire for us is infinitely greater than our desire for him. And if God has put into your heart a desire to pray, helped by these meditations, it's because of his desire, his love for you. He has loved us first. And this time of prayer is merely our effort to respond to his love. Dear friend, let yourself be loved. But let's return to today's feast, Our Lady, Queen of Heaven. Now, as you've probably guessed from my accent, I come from England and specifically London. In London, there's a suburb called Chelsea in the southwest of the city. It's a rather posh and rich district, and it also has a rich history. As one watches the cars drive past the River Thames as it flows wide and peaceful through the area, it's hard to imagine that once a desperate battle was fought here between the invading Romans and the ancient Britons trying to resist them. But it's also hard to imagine that a very sad moment in the history of the English Reformation took here, took place here in Chelsea, when England broke from the Catholic Church. For it's here that it is believed that Thomas Cromwell, the great executor of England's break from Rome in the 16th century, had burnt the statue of Our Lady of Walsingham in the gardens of his Chelsea home. Here too, St. Thomas More, that great saint, had lived in this area. And it's ironic that where once a saint lived, now Cromwell was destroying this devotion to Mary, this deep aspect of Catholic life. Walsingham, in the east of England, was then one of the great shrines of Europe, visited by thousands. But Cromwell, who had strong Protestant tendencies, was hostile to devotion to Mary. So he had this statue and others burnt to try to quash such, de such devotion in the land. Now, some people think that the statue might just have been saved, but that's a different story. From the Reformation onwards, England has, has always been a Protestant country, and English has always been considered a Protestant language. And so for me, it's a great joy as a Catholic priest to help launch these podcasts today on a feast of Our Lady. It's my desire that once again, English may become a language to honour the Mother of God. We praise you, Mother. We are full of joy that on this feast and every day we can honour you. And we pray that these podcasts may always be to your honour and therefore through you for the glory of God. And so, dear friends, I introduce to you these meditations, which now, please God, will come out every day preached by different priests. You're going to hear a whole range of accents, accents of priests from numerous English speaking countries from various continents. Another reminder of the universality, the, cath the cath Catholicity of the church. We want to help you pray. I've said so already, and that's all we want, to bring you closer to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, to help you enter into the life of the Trinity, and ultimately to help you get to heaven. But we also want these podcasts to be great means of evangelization, so that you can share them with your friends, so that many thousands of souls can, through them, come into contact with God, and perhaps many souls come back to God with a deep and joyful conversion. Please pray for this initiative. Please, please pray that it may bring many thousands of souls, including yours, to God. And please, don't forget to say a few prayers for us, the preachers, and for all priests. I give you thanks, my God, 
for the good resolutions, affections, and inspirations you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask you for help to put them into effect. My mother immaculate, Saint Joseph, my father and lord, my guardian angel, intercede for.